Scientists at the LSU Ag Center's Hill Farm Research Station gave poultry producers advice on how to measure or lessen the environmental effects of their operations. Bill Owens, coordinator of the station, said disposal of birds at Parrish is a major issue. Anytime you have uh, an operation where you have a large number of chickens, you're going to have some mortality, and you have to have a way to deal with that mortality. One way to dispose of the birds is by composting them. Owens is experimenting with an EcoDrum composter and is trying to determine how factors such as airflow, composting materials, and time influence the decomposition process. One potential drawback is the initial cost. If you're building a house, if you're about to, to borrow money to build a house, you can put that cost into your initial loan and prorate it out over the course of the loan. Poultry litter is another issue facing producers. Ag Center poultry specialist wow. Teresa Laverne stressed the benefits producers can get by windrowing and composting their litter. When we compost it, we have a benefit to both the chickens and people as well because we heat that litter up to a high enough temperature to re kill pathogens and bacteria. Laverne said that once an operator becomes proficient in windrowing, it typically takes no more than 90 minutes to windrow a house. She also said the practice can be used any time of the year. The environmental temperature of the house does not influence the temperature of the windrow. The windrow heats up by itself. So it can be, it's a management tool that can be used year round. Scientists at the station are also studying if fan dust is a source of pollution. With the LSU Ag Center, this is Craig Gotro reporting. Every year, farmers fight insects, weeds, and diseases. But this year, they are battling frequent rains, which are complicating their pest control strategies. LSU Ag Center plant pathologist Trey Price told participants at the Ag Center's Northeast Research Station Field Day that wet, humid weather is conducive for the development of diseases. He warned about the disease target spot in cotton. It's a really fast-moving disease under the right conditions and can really defoliate cotton uh, fairly quickly. Price said corn growers need to watch for the disease northern leaf blight. And some soybean producers are replanting their crop because seed treatments designed to protect the soybean seeds from diseases couldn't stand up to all the rain. The seed treatments didn't fail because they're not good. Uh, it's just they ran out of time. They got so much rain after they planted. It was really the worst case scenario. Ag Center crop fertility specialist Beatrix Haggard is researching products that help prevent nitrogen loss under heavy rainfall. She told growers to watch for nitrogen loss in their corn. We started getting intense rainfalls. Um, that started promoting just more nitrogen loss before they could ever even get a fertilizer rig out to put the fertilizer on the field. Farmers also learned about ways to defend their fields from weeds. Weed scientist Donnie Miller said soybean and cotton varieties that can tolerate the herbicides 2,4-D and dicamba may be available next year. As good as these new technologies are and as exciting as they are, they still must conform to the principles of weed science and mother nature. Miller said it is important for farmers to use different modes of control in their fields to avoid developing herbicide-resistant weeds. 